what is happening guys cowboy here and we are back ready to continue on into the fiery hellscape of the old iron king dlc so uh this way i believe yes this way indeed all right now i know there's a bunch of stuff like we can't go that way that's actually the way i need to go to pick up uh the life ring if i remember right um is that that's the ladder down this does not move right now. This does not move right now. Okay. Now this part can be a little tricky. Um, what we're going to do... Basically there's that asshole right there. And you can... Well first thing we're going to do is send this guy down. Send him in. He's, he's basically our trap guy. Now. If I remember... We have to hit. We have to get this guy to basically come over and open the door for us. I think that's how this one works. Maybe not. Maybe I'm mistaken. But I want to say I remember that being it. Yeah, try attacking. Come on, man. Oh, nope, that was it. So we had to just attack through and hit the barrels. Ah, okay. Well, either way, backstab this bitch. Now, as you can see, there are a number of assholes in here. We have this asshole. We have those assholes. couple different things we're going to do here. Not praise the sun. <laughs> that is not what we're doing. Um, first thing we're going to do is put on those fire arrows that we picked up. Don't need to do that. I need to do this. And do that. So that's why we sent that little guy down there. Now we're going to drop down. This is a trap door. And we're going to immediately hit this. Use the smelter wedge. Mmm. Those delicious fucking eye frames. Alright. This is going exceedingly smooth. Now, you may have noticed a number of guys down there. They're usually not down there already. You usually have to kind of herd them in. If I remember correctly, I want to say they're usually in this room actually waiting. But basically, you know, just herd them on in. You know, just kind of how we did that one guy. You just push them a little bit, and they'll be like, ah, and they'll run. How we made that guy go down this trap. And they just killed themselves. That's great. That makes my life so much fucking easier. But that's why we, uh... One, hit the smelter wedge, and then two, send those guys down because they make fantastic bombs. Now, for example, let's say you uh, you weren't as lucky as me and they obviously didn't kill themselves. Instead, you can always sit up here and effectively cheese your way to victory if you really wanted to. Um, to do the trick, I usually group them up and then get just at the right angle, a little bit more, and you can usually fire straight on down and hit those guys. So thankfully they took out the, the biggest, baddest guy of the group. The rest of these guys are as simple as a quick backstab. Suppose I could parry them. No, I can't parry you. Can't parry a bow. But you're dead regardless. Probably didn't need a double sip, but whatever. Another soul of Dahlia. Flame Quartz plus three. And pull the switch. Wary of ghost. That's right, this thing stands back... Oh no, you're the one that stands back up. These guys have really weird swings. Like, for the most part, they just don't connect. Every now and then they do. I don't think that one gets back up. Maybe it does. Either way, grab the piles of loot. Dashing through and then hooray. No, we're not going to dash through. Remember, I want to say some of these guys pop up. 
Actually, yeah, we are going to dash through because I want to take her out first. So, just to push her off, and then we're going to run back. Take a little sippy. see the one axe guy is from behind us he is a little bit delayed on that so just be aware that there's one more coming took uh, a bit longer than I thought he would have come and damn that Estus actually heals for a lot more than I thought it did so we're gonna kill her real fast and you gotta be careful around these these chicks because they do that they do this teleport behind you and then backstab you thing as well as that crazy lightning AoE spell they can be quite punishing if you're not careful you can also backstab them. Mmm. Delicious Sunny D. So I'm going to try and wait until I take another pop shot before I heal. Um, now, if I remember, can't we? From right here where we can pop shot. Okay, this is the part where I was thinking that it was terrible and it sucked because of all the guys. So we'll enchant the spear up. Kill this one first. Here they all come. So you just use this pillar to stop the archer guy from getting a clean shot on us. Now, a couple guys will pop out of this area, um, specifically as you get close to the wall. So just keep that in mind. I don't know why she's derping out so hard. <laughs> Fucking asshole. I knew you were coming, too. And still you managed to get the jump on me. Man, I forgot how much you can actually hurt with spells. Back up. We're gonna actually run in and get a stab upon her. There we go. So easiest way is to probably just roll straight through like that. To basically roll to bait those guys out. I believe there's one more. Maybe. Maybe not. Now, some of these drop items, I don't remember exactly which ones, but I just try and run through all of them just to be safe. And looks like there's a giant mosquito that got in the house, so the cat may very well unplug the console. Hopefully that does not happen. Open this, and I believe this is a bonfire. Go... Yes, it is. Alright, so let's go this way. We'll get the bonfire real fast. Perhaps the most annoying area of this DLC. So it didn't need to rest here, but might as well get your durability back. And this is progression-wise where you want to go, but there are some items this way, and considering, even though I wasn't initially planning on it, I might as well just, you know, keep up with my current rate and show you guys everything. So let's head on down. Grab the item way out here, and then get ready for one of the most annoying parts of this DLC. Because Q, Maldrin, the legendary dickhead, in just a second here. Now, there's a couple ways that are very effective to fight this dude. One of which is two-handed hammers. You can basically pancake attack him over and over again, and that's probably the most effective method. Um, he's exceedingly annoying. He runs around. He dodges constantly. You can see GRS barely hurting him, but he does leave his back a bit vulnerable, so backstabs can be effective. And once you get through a certain amount of damage, he's going to just run. You can see right now he's going for his sprint to weigh complete 
utter asshole. Really annoying. Um, on top of that, this whole area down here is filled with bullshit. Right now, these guys are actually buffed. That's why it's taking so many to kill them. And on top of that, there's another one of those, um, another one of those, uh, Ashen Idols that we need to destroy. So I'm trying to remember. I want to say that these guys actually respawn until we destroy the Ashen Idol. That might not be the case. Either way, you get the, <clears throat> Uh, kind of tribute to Artorias sword down there. So we're going to head on down and grab it. And this area can be really annoying. If I remember correctly, I also think there's a curse effect that starts the second we start going down into it. Yes, indeed. Now, we could come back here later after we have the mask that effectively negates out curse. That would be what a smart person would do. Um, unfortunately, we are a suicidal asshole instead, so... With that in mind, run, run, and run. As fast as we can. Maljun's here. Wait for him. All right, no, he's not gonna go for us. Let's get the wedge in. We got our iframes. We're probably gonna die, but we have the wedge, and that's the important thing. So with the wedge in, we can run back out. And the main reason we're running back out is one, to heal up, and two, to basically snipe our way through some of this content. All right, so now that the Ashen Idol is cured, uh, for starters, these guys aren't buffed as strong as they were before, so they're a lot easier to kill. Two, they also won't respawn when we kill them, making it significantly easier to clear. So in short, any area there's going to be an Ashen Idol, you're much better off just killing the idol and then after killing it, aiming to take on the stuff that's there. You can see we're just doing a little bit of terrain abuse. And obviously this is a tactic that's extremely oriented towards casters. If you're melee, you know, you can just as easily do this with a bow. If you want to run up on them, just, you know, run up on them. It's definitely not going to be a walk in the park, but it is a valid strategy. Now, Maldron, where did you go? Fail roll. Unfortunately, the Ash and Mist idols don't respawn, and we did grab the bonfire first, so not all hope is lost. We still gotta re-kill Dickhead, but that area will be significantly easier to go through. There's actually a really cool item you can pick up. There's two really cool items here, one of them giving you very, very significant fire resist, which we'll get to that a little bit later. And the other giving you uh, basically perma curse resist. When you have it on, it, it puts your curse resist to like 999. So it makes Nishandra a joke. It makes going back and doing this area a joke. But, you know, you hit this area right now and we're here right now. So we're going to do it right now. So we're going to try something here. Still too quick, little bastard. Whatever, we'll take them out. <laughs> that was funny. that back. 
I don't plan on dying anytime soon. One life gem might be enough, but we'll use two just for good measure here. And we aren't falling for same bullshit fall twice, so. Start making our way down. Um, there's no walls here to my knowledge. I didn't think so, just another typical PS3 troll. Plus five, great bow if you don't already have one. It'll make life really easy for those doing strength builds. And honestly, the second time going through this, because we've already disabled, it's a lot easier. You know, these guys, for example, they're down in their initial positions, so we don't even have to worry about them uh, really counter-firing at us. We can just kind of just sit here and cheese them to death. And there's Maldron as well. We might be able to cheese him entirely from here. I'm not sure. I mean, this is my first time uh, dealing with him as a pure caster like this, but this seems to be working pretty effectively. It looks like he's not running to get his chug on, so maybe, just maybe, we have out-cheesed the dickhead himself. Fortunately, Dark Orb has an absurdly high amount of casts, making this actually viable. We're basically just breaking his shield and then actually hitting him. It's kind of funny. No, Maldron. Sorry. Oh, down you go. Ooh, man. For a second there, I was a little worried that that fall wasn't going to work out for us. So, Effigy from him. Another Soul of Nadalia. Now, two more guys should pop out when we get down here. Run in a quick circle. Really? Where are you guys at? There we go. I was wondering what was taking you guys so long. Might as well heal up. Majestic Great Sword is ours. So for those that have never seen it before, um, you typically use it in the left hand. The ancient great sword of unknown origin, the sword has passed down through the generations until it reached Gordon, wandering knight of Ferosa, and was lost upon his death. Canonically, every last one of the prominent swordsmen who had inherited this weapon was left-handed, because obviously it's extremely similar to that of the Artorias sword, basically based directly on it. Additionally, the left-handed moveset is different from the right-handed moveset, so has a spin, and in addition has a flip maneuver. Pretty good greatsword, a little gimmicky, but you know, with uh, some good use, it can be quite effective. I actually tried for a while to make a build that was working with that. Uh, it was that, the Foom Sword, the Long Sword variant. <coughs> oh god, no. Fuck that. You know what, we don't, we don't even need to deal with you guys. Just fuck right off. Man, we're at 19 minutes already? Son of a bitch. Alright. So from here... quick peek on the areas. Yes, I think this is the path we need to go to go get our, uh, our goodies, because we need to go get the scepter. If I'm not mistaken, let me just do a quick run here, but I believe all of this is
basically locked out until we get the scepter, which once we get that, this whole area opens up and becomes uh, new, basically. And there's like a bunch of new shit. And this is where we, is where we came from? Yeah, that's where the guy was. Right. And you're locked. So I did see one item over here. There we go. Spell quartz plus three. So now we have spell and flame quartz plus three. And we will roll wrap things up here now that we have reached the foyer and taken out Maldron. So make sure to stay tuned. A couple more parts to wrap up this DLC. Once we get the scepter, things really get kicked off. And then it's basically just one boss after another until all three are knocked down. So make sure to stay tuned, and we'll catch you guys at the next episode.